How you doing everyone? Scott back again, this time for my very first music room tour. Something that I've never done before and it's something that I really enjoy watching from other channels. Some guys that I watch have done two or three of these in the amount of years that they've been on YouTube and I've not done one. So I thought it was about time to let you guys see basically more than this. Um, I'll take you through my turntable, my hi-fi setup, how I store my records, CDs and just basically let you guys see more than what you're seeing right now. So it's not a massive room, so it shouldn't take too long. Um, I'm sure we all wish we could have a bigger room and a comfier room or a better looking room, but this is what I have. So I'll show you guys now. All right, so we'll start at this wall. So as you'll see here, this is where, this is what sits behind me when I'm doing my videos. The Iron Maiden, Monsters of Rock poster and the Wasp the Idol. Um, but we'll get round to that side of the room. Um, what a lot of people might not have seen is this. Uh, signed Dr. Feel Good by Motley Crue. As you can see, signed by the full band. And above that, I have Cinderella and night songs signed by everyone apart from Jeff Labar, which is a bit of a shame but uh, it's still a really nice piece to have on the wall. Uh, coming round, this is my big comfy sofa with my arse print right there um, where I do all my listening. Um, over here is, this is kind of like my overflow Kallax so this is my secondary Kallax on top. We have Motley Crue, the end box set. Really great box set, but because of the shape, it doesn't fit in the unit, so it has to sit on top. Beside that, we have Motley Crue's first issue of Kerrang! in December 1983, signed by the full band as well, and that silver pen. In front of that, we have... This um, this is almost just like a kind of trinket thing that my wife brought back from America. So it was just like the skull. And um, I got this mask from the gym I go to, but it's a bit small. So I just thought I would stick it on the skull, make him look like a bit of a, a bandit. And finished it off with these skull candy earphones that I don't use anymore. That was mainly for using with my old iPod and phone, so... That is my wee skull ornament. Uh, moving down onto the top shelf of the Kallax, this bin here is my new arrivals bin, I would call. Um, but a lot of it's been sitting there for a very long time. So what I do between these two bins is everything I'm going to show, or still to show, is in this bin, and I move it to this bin when I start to listen to it and um, think about putting it in an update video. So, uh, a sneak peek from here. Amulet, The Inevitable War. Um, what else is here? British Steel compilation album. So there's a couple of things that will be coming up very shortly on this channel. Um, this isn't a sex toy, this is just... Uh, <laughs> Another wee ornament, kind of cheap ornament, but it's it, it fits, not fits there, it fits on that shelf uh, nicely. Um, and again, bought by my wife. So, going down, this is the where basically my collection starts up again. So I've got a full Kallax on the other side of the room, which is now full. And instead of shuffling everything about, I thought I would just start again in here and then just start working my way down again. So um, A through to Z. Um, I just thought it'd be an, an easier way to do it rather than shuffling things about from bin to bin and then from unit to unit. Uh, beside that, I've got a couple of box sets and more box sets down there. 
Um, here is just a load of drawn stuff. But underneath the drawn stuff is my old receiver, which packed in on me uh, last year. So that was a bit of a nightmare. I then had to go and get a new receiver, which also didn't work. That was a, a pre-owned receiver. I then thought about getting that one fixed. But it was going to cost probably more to get it fixed than just to go and buy a new one or a new pre-owned one. So that's what I did. So that's just been sitting there collecting dust. Um, so moving on to my setup. Sorry about the light here. Um, above my turntable, I have this record shelf, which basically I just kind of keep a couple of records on that I'm spinning more than once. Uh, and behind that, I keep a couple of brushes. This little brush down here is for the surface of my records, just to kind of get the surface dust off. And this one here is for around the platter and the arm, just to kind of get all the dust off the actual table itself. So I just kind of keep them up there behind those records. So I'll take a step back. And this is the kind of full picture of my setup. So as you can see at the side, we both we have two floor standing LTAX speakers. L These LTAX speakers are really, really cheap, but they are actually very, very good. So if you're looking for a really cheap option, LTAX are the way to go. They sound great. Um, I mean, if there was one part of my system that I would update, it would be the speakers, but um, I'm not listening to jazz or anything that I'm going to be kind of sitting there picking the notes out the air with. It's, this is going to be metal playing through these speakers, so the speakers don't have to be top notch. Um, I know some people have a thing about that, they've got to have the best of the best. We'd all like the best of the best, but... We've just got to kind of go with what we have. And um, as far as sound goes, the speakers are are great. Um, so on the bottom shelf, I have on the left a uh, dual cassette deck Technics from, I think it's 1992. And beside that is the matching receiver, which is the same as the receiver um, over there. The, that I just bought again. So a really great receiver, that's why I just kind of went for it again. I knew it, I knew it was an easy setup. Um, apart from it basically being on its last legs, I have had no problems with it before. So it's quite robust. Again, from the early 90s, so it's been around, it's lasted. So um, I just went for that again. And so far, so good, not had any problems with it. Um, Moving up a bit, it's not the greatest of light, but this is the another early 90s a bit of kit. This is the JVC CD player. I would give you all the fancy numbers after it, but I don't care enough, <laughs> to be honest, about that. As long as you can put the CD in and it plays, I am fully happy with that. Um, I've always kind of liked a bit of a kind of mixed up setup if you know what I mean. Um, so that is the CD player. And then up to my turntable. This is the Riga Planar 1, or the P1. Um, excellent turntable. As you can see, it's got the kind of more minimalist look. It was between this. I, I upgraded from a Audio-Technica 60, LP60. And it was either going to be the Audio-Technica LP120, or it was going to be the Riga Planar P1, which they both come in at around the same price. So I thought I would change it up and go for the P1. It wasn't just because of the look. It's it's simple to use, and I, I really got a great deal on it as well. And um, there's no... You don't have to mess around with the weight of the arm or all this kind of stuff, tracking, none of that does it all automatically apart from you put this weight basically this comes separately this just slides on and it's the perfect weight for this arm so 
very easy setup. A uh, power button under here. But yeah, I found this on eBay. It was marked as it had an aesthetic problem. So there was some sort of aesthetic fault to it. Um, which said in the description, it didn't have the actual fault, but it said in the description that it was very small, um, wouldn't affect play, wouldn't affect function of the record player. So I thought, you know what? And it was, I think this was £70 less than I would normally pay for it. So I thought, you know what? I'll take a punt and I'll try my luck. And do you know what? I've had it for nearly two years. I've still not found the flaw with the, the turntable. I've checked multiple times, still can't find what's wrong with it. Play is great, so, um, you know, no problems there. So, that is the, this also comes in white, I think. Um, the, the actual platter comes in, in white, but I went for black to kind of have the contrasting against the white um, furniture. So, back to the actual furniture, this was, I kind of always struggle to find units that that fit or suit whatever I'm trying to put in it. So what I did with this was this used to be a three drawer chest of drawers. So there was a drawer here in the middle and then obviously on top. But what I did was I took the two top drawers out, all the fixings out and basically just bought the same kind of furniture board as the units made of and put these 18 mil shelves in. Although uh, this one is starting to dip a little bit because of the weight of the two heavy bits of kit on the bottom. Um, but I thought I'd keep the the bottom drawer in so I had a bit of storage for sleeves and the like. So if you open this drawer up, you know, it's just inner sleeves, outer sleeves, um, some cables in there as well. So just kind of spare bits and pieces. Um, or things that I might need in the future. So this is basically what I see when I'm filming my videos. This is my view. I put the tripod in front of me here and um, this is what I'm looking at. Um, so we'll move on. Working our way around the room. This is my CD collection with my very small tape collection on top. Um, a wee old school discman there from the 90s and also I found this Panasonic tape player in my relative's attic so I just thought I'd take that not really to use, just to pretty much have on display so as you can see we're overflowing a little bit um, this is the full view of my CD collection now I couldn't find, again, a unit that would fit and I kind of wanted to build up rather than use all the wall space across. So what I did was just bought this furniture board. This is 16mm white furniture board. Um, and I basically just built this myself um, just so I could get the exact measurements that I wanted. And it means that I can now extend it up for all the overflow that's come in and everything that will come in in the future and I can also build across uh, across the top of the TV as well so um, that is my CD collection obviously working from A to B to C to D E F G all the way down to there um, bottom shelves consist of books and a couple of DVDs mainly just autobiographies biographies um, metal art, so how artwork from albums evolved over the years and how it all started. Um, Lord of the Rings, Tommy Iommi, Motley Crue, Slash, all the kind of usual books. I've read probably about half of them. Um, I actually kicked this bit of board the other day and that just needs to be pulled out, so it's not broken, it just... I was being clumsy. So again, that's the full look at my CDs. 
and we'll move on to the vinyl. So this is the Kallax vinyl storage. This one is obviously on its side. Stroke TV stand. Um, so what I used to do with my vinyl, I used to have it all kind of stacked and had the kind of small V's in the middle with nothing in it. So nothing was right next to each other, but you know how it goes. The more you buy, the more space you need and the more space you need to use. So these all basically got kind of cramped together. But to be honest, it looks actually better like this. And they're not, they're not super tight. Um, and what I did was I cut bits of wood for the actual inside the, the cubes. Because when you put these calaxes against the the baseboard or the skirting board, you do get a big gap at the back. Um, so what I did was I measured it all up and screwed bits of wood at the back of every cube so the, the record sat forward a little bit, which I think looks better. I've not done it on the on my Kallax over there yet. As you can see, they are sitting against the wall, but I think this does look a lot better and more uniform. So that is the secondary part of my record collection. On top, PlayStation 3. Um, and here we are back to this corner. Monsters of Rock, Iron Maiden poster, uh, Wasp, the idol, which you'll have seen behind my head if you watch my videos a lot, then this these two pictures are the pictures that sit behind me as my kind of background. And above the idol, we have Annihilator, Alice in Hell, um, LP cover signed by the band. But what's different about this one is it's actually signed by um, Coburn Farr, who came on board after this album. So Randy Rampage did the vocals for this album, but it is signed uh, Coburn Farr, the new guy. So this must have been obviously while they were recording Never Neverland or just after. So that's quite an interesting piece as well. That's a lovely glare. So that is my room tour. Not massive. Um, and you know what it's like. We can always go bigger and better, but um, this is what I have for now. And I uh, hope you enjoyed that. Please, as always, leave a comment. Let me know what you think of my very first music room tour. And uh, I will speak to you guys and see you guys very, very soon. Cheers.